Now we're going to do a few minutes on reflecting on motivation. So now ask yourself, why are you doing these practices? Why are you taking this time? And reflect on that now. And I'll suggest that the reason why you're doing these practices is to become happy and wise. So now see that result. See your life going forward being much happier and wiser. There's this quality of lightness, serenity, ease, competence. And now notice how when you're operating from this place of security, happiness, wisdom, etc. that there's a natural concern for others, a natural openness towards others. See how you're, you're more cooperative, how you expect cooperation from others. There's a concern for the wellness of others. So easy to connect. So now see that. See this greater wisdom, happiness, and greater pro-social concern arising in the meditation. You know, really see this life unfold for you. And now reflect with a great clarity. This is why I'm practicing. This is why we're doing the practice. It's with these goals in mind. And these goals are wholesome. This is good for you, good for others. Now take a sense of kind of justified motivation wholesome motivation from this. Good. Okay. So now come out of the meditation. And now uh, we'll do about three minutes of lecture. And then we'll get going with the larger meditation. Okay, so today uh, it's going to be similar to how we've been practicing. We'll do this um, attachment repair meditation. And let's just go over some of the structure. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna um, relax and focus the mind like we usually do. And we're gonna do a breathing practice, taking a few deep breaths. Then we're gonna do a body scan. We may or may not do our little safe space exercise. Then we're gonna identify a problem that we wanna work on. And this will be, this can be like one of the schemas or it can be just some sort of problem from your, um, your recent, your, your past week. And so let me just go through a couple of schema or a few schemas just to remind you. And you can already start contemplating what it is that you wanna work on and repattern. So. Schemas that are very good to work on. Uh, fear, mistrust, abuse. If that resonates whatsoever, in my opinion, that's the single most important kind of maladaptive schema or like emotional thought to repattern. 
that's the one that causes the most uh, disturbance in life, in my opinion. There's also abandonment, like fear of abandonment, um, shame, defectiveness, um, social isolation, emotional deprivation, um, incompetence, um, and dependence, like in a meshed self, like feeling like you, you're not a separate person that can really um, disembed from others. Um, also, this, this feeling of vulnerability to harm. So anyway, just pick one of those or some other um, em maladaptive emotional learning and decide to work on that. So anyway, that's phase two. So phase one, relaxation. Phase two, identify the problem. Phase three is bring in these inner parents and they have compassion. Basically, like the third phase is just the compassion phase. And then the fourth phase is sympathetic joy slash further cultivation phase. Um, and so let me, I'll unpack and just reiterate um, phases three and four. And then let me also add that you don't need to remember this whatsoever, you'll be cued. So um, phase three is you're with your problem and then the parents show you compassion. And then what is compassion? Compassion is what love does when it sees suffering. Another way to describe compassion is it is the optimal response to suffering. Another way to explain compassion, it is um, um, the desire for suffering to decrease. And that's coming from a place of love and security. Then, and, and so here we're kind of re-patterning the belief. And it's, it's really as simple as just having the negative belief and then actually having a positive experience, which being loved and being cared for and being shown compassion is deeply positive. And we're re-patterning this positive experience over the negative, this, this negative um, emotional learning. And then in this phase, you can kind of, you know, drop back into the negative feeling, like feel it again, and then repattern it again. So you can kind of like tip back in to the, 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 the feeling and uh, of the negative belief. And then the parents come in and soothe you and then show you this compassion again and again until it gets repatterned. And then to further, um, to continue with the repatterning, then we get, when we're done with the um, compassion phase, we then experience sympathetic joy from the parents where they are brilliantly delighted with you delight and rejoicing in how wonderful you are and seeing also your healing and, and like seeing your good qualities. So sympathetic joy, and I'm taking that from Buddhism, is this rejoicing in the good, the good qualities and the strengths of others. And that's basically it. And then we'll, we'll end. Um, let's see, let me go back to my notes. Um, that is it. In the case that there is a pressing question around this, uh, you can go ahead and ask, is there, are there any questions around this? Going once, going twice. Okay, cool. Let's, uh, then let's get going with the meditation. So here we go. So we'll start with the first phase, which is relaxation. Okay, so sitting up straight, pushing the crown of the head up towards the ceiling. The shoulders are back and down just a bit. The chest is up and out just a bit. The hips are slightly rolled forward, such to open up the diaphragm to allow for deeper breathing. The neck is long and straight. The chin is slightly tucked. And the crown of the head is pushing up towards the ceiling. The eyes can be either open, halfway open or closed. 
And now we're gonna do three deep breaths. So inhale very, very deeply and then retain the breath. Retain. Exhale. Extending the exhale. And now inhale once again very, very deeply. Retain the breath below the navel. Exhale slowly. And now one more really deep breath. Inhale very deeply. Retain the breath below the navel. Exhale very slowly, really extending the length of the exhale. And now we're gonna start with a body scan. And this body scan will help us stay in the body and make this practice embodied. This is important. So now feel the feet, legs, and hips. And now the feet, legs, and hips all relax on their own without any strain. And also there's no pressure to relax. If you can't relax, you just accept that. And now notice the rising and falling of the abdomen. Notice how there's no straining. Just this light quality of observing. And now bringing the attention to the chest, rising and falling, expanding, contracting.
And now feeling the shoulders and upper back. We often hold tension here. So you can just gently let that tension go. And if you can't let the tension go, allow that to be just as it is. That's okay too. And now feeling the arms and the hands. And now feel the head, neck, and face. And now take a deep, deep breath. Feel the whole body all at once. And exhale, feeling the whole body exhale all at once. And now get this sense of dissolution, of total settling. That's right. And now bring up this schema, this negative emotional learning that was likely triggered this past week. Maybe it could be fear, mistrust, abuse, abandonment, sense of not being seen, not being attuned with, social isolation, shame, defectiveness, dependence, incompetence, underdeveloped sense of self, not knowing who you are, etc. So bring that up and now really try to get yourself triggered. Really feel this in the body and in the mind. And now bring up the vulnerable inner child. So then you, you regress back to childhood and then you still got this negative emotional learning going, you're triggered. And now allow for a scene to arise. And it doesn't matter if it's a real memory, a real thing that happened, or if it's this, um, a composite felt sense memory. The element that we're trying to repattern is the semantic memory, not the actual episodic memory. So what it means. So go ahead and develop that scene now. And if it was an actual scene of abuse, don't go into the abuse itself. Just go in afterwards. Really notice how you feel right now. How do you feel in the body? 
How do you feel in the mind? Likely it feels pretty, pretty bad. And now generate these inner responsive parents to come and, and take care of you in just the right way. The thing that you notice is their responsiveness, their total receptivity. They see your suffering and there is a totally sincere and engaged desire that that suffering decrease. You can really see that in them. And so now go ahead and develop a scene that is right for you to help you move through this. Go ahead and do that now. There's this quality of attentiveness, really seeing you. And they validate the difficult emotions that have come up for you, but they don't validate any negative thoughts that you have about yourself. They don't think that there is anything truly wrong with you. You just had some difficult experiences and these difficult experiences imprinted, and now we're undoing that. And they know that you're gonna be just fine. This is really clear. And you can go back, touching back into the negative learning, touching back into the scene and then kind of turning to the parents and seeing their complete receptivity, their complete unconditional positive regard. And every time you do that, you notice how this negative learning is being unlearned, that you're being comforted, soothed, etc. That's right, keep going. Now they also show you and tell you in a really convincing way that this is this was not your fault. You did not do anything fundamentally wrong. And that you're gonna move through this just fine. Also, they tell you in a way that's very compelling to you, you're not gonna have to deal with any more of this stuff going forward. You have these responsive parents that are gonna take care of you. Now really let that imprint deeply, building up a well-reasoned faith in these parents. That's right.
And now touch back into that earlier theme, touch back into that early, that negative emotional learning. See if there's any triggering there left and then have them soothe you again, giving you compassion, which is nothing like pity at all. They think you're wonderful but they do see and acknowledge your suffering. And keep going with this. Also, if some apparently unrelated objection or unrelated problem comes up, these responsive parents see that and then soothe you and help you move through this problem that has come up. There's nothing that you can throw at them that's a problem for them. And now also notice how you don't need to modify yourself whatsoever that you're taken in, received, and responded to just as you are. You don't need to worry about their mental states. Doesn't matter how upset you get. You could never, they would never become emotionally dysregulated to, due to your upset or your presentation. You can be as angry as you want, doesn't matter. They're at total ease with this and they just move to comfort you. They move to help you work through this suffering. so clear you're going to be all right. And then one more time, touch into the maladaptive schema, the negative belief, touch into the scene. See if there's any triggering there. And now have these responsive parents respond just in just the right way to help you totally work through this. Also really stay connected to the body as well. This repatterning is both mental and physical. Notice how you're also starting to feel better about yourself. You're starting to see that this conditioning was just conditioning, had nothing to do with you. You're also having a growing sense of competence and confidence, knowing that you, you seeing how you move through this and how you'll keep moving through any negative conditioning of yours. And now notice how this is also completely real to these inner parents. They see that in you. They see how well you're doing. They're so proud of you. Okay, now dissolve that scene. And now we're gonna do another scene. And let me just explain it just a bit. So make yourselves receptive. We're gonna float back with the parents by our side, and they're gonna show us the scene and make sense of the problematic learning. And now I'm gonna kind of make an assumption that that you were treated in a bad, kind of unpleasant, unkind way. But so this wouldn't uh, apply to really like loss. So if it's like a loss, someone having died or something, then the parents just simply continue to comfort you around it. So this 
the scene we're going to do is more oriented towards being mistreated. So, okay, so now you and these inner parents float up above the scene and then kind of follow a timeline back in time. And now you come back to this scene, this either this uh, reconstituted type made up scene or real scene where you were treated unfairly. And now they show you in a, in a kind of supportive but really confident way, this treatment you got was wrong and it wasn't your fault. And if it's an abuse scene, it's very, very distant and you don't have to think about the abuse. They say, this is not right. This was this other person's bad conditioning. This is not on you. You've not done anything wrong. Anyone else would have responded in just the same way. And they're so confident and supportive and sweet and kind about this. You can really take this new learning in. And now these parents or you might confront this person that treated you poorly in a firm, not violent way. They say, hey, this is not right. This was your conditioning. You should have dealt with this. You shouldn't have passed this on. This isn't, let's say, my child's responsibility to deal with. And now this person that was unkind to you sees this. And now this does not have to be realistic, but just go with this. And now they apologize. I'm sorry, I didn't understand. I really didn't know any better in a certain way. I was ignorant and I didn't know how to act any better. And it pains me that this happened. It won't happen again, but now also notice how you don't have to trust the piece about the other person saying it won't happen again because you, now you're with your parents, your inner parents, and they're gonna take care of you. And so you and these inner parents see this from a distance, likely you're bigger and stronger than this person that treated you poorly. You see this and, there, and this is not necessary, but there might even be a bit of compassion that arises for this person. If you don't wanna feel this, you don't have to. And you just see, oh, this person was foolish. This person was ignorant and it affected me in a negative way. But now I see it wasn't, it's not mine to carry any longer. So now you let that go. And now you, you and the inner parents go on. And now you're going to do a new scene. And here, the inner parents see all your good work. They see how far you've come. They also see how all this conditioning is getting resolved. And that there's this growing sense of competence, confidence, self-agency ease with exploration, ease with connecting with others that is growing with inside of you. And now notice how they delight in you. They delight in your growth and they delight in your very being. This is so clear. 
Go ahead and develop a scene along those lines now. Particularly now, develop a scene in which you're being social and that you're coming from this place of deep security, feeling totally supported and also coming from a place of valuing attachment, valuing connection. Go ahead and develop that scene with the inner parents supporting you all along the way. This can be either as a child or as an adult. See how you're a delight to others. Others rejoice in you and you rejoice in them. Also see yourself collaborating and cooperating with others in ways that you find satisfying. Also notice how you can have a real impact on your social world. How either the parents or these other people in the scene are attentive to you, attentive to your mind states. How that you have an impact on them. You feel understood and you understand them. You know, get this sense that you can really get get the things done that you want to get done socially. You elicit the responses that you want. Develop that scene. And it's also fine if, if a, a romantic scene arises, like that you also that you elicit the romantic responses that you want from others. That's totally fine. This would be as an adult. That others are so interested in you, so cooperative, so responsive that it really gives you a sense of agency of being able to move through your life in a way where you accomplish what you want. And then what you want is in harmony with what others want. Develop that scene. And now have these inner parents see this. They're so proud of you. They absolutely rejoice in you. They're happy because you're happy, because your future is bright. And it's like you always feel your inner parents right there, that they're right behind you, always have your back, always supporting you in just the right way. Now, this, also feel this in the body, feel this in the mind, feel how deeply this imprints. This is what you expect of life going forward.
Okay, so we just did a scene where we were having the social interpersonal responses and impacts that we wanted. So now let's do a scene where we focus more on our own explorations. And this might not be as social, this might be just about having an impact on the world. And it can be not social or it can also be social. So now think about something that you want to do in your life, that you want to get accomplished. And now create a plan around that. And now see this plan, see how beautifully put together this plan is. These inner parents see your ingenuity and creativity. They think that your plan is so wonderful. Really see that clearly. And now see yourself implementing the plan. And now get this sense that this plan is going really well. You have so much support, so much confidence. And you also have the skills to pay the bills. You've got the competence. Now see that scene unfold. That's right, keep going. Now really get this sense of accomplishment. You're just moving through this beautifully. There's so much support. You keep having the desired impact on the world. See that now. See how the whole world is opening up to you. And now there are always little roadblocks and problems. There are always little kind of iterations that need to be made. So now imagine yourself getting emotionally disturbed, so um, emotionally dysregulated about some kind of problem with the implementation part of your plan. So bring that up now. And now the inner parents come, they sit next to you, they soothe you, they support you in just the right way. Now notice how immediately you're emotionally regulated again. And now you get right back up on the saddle and you keep moving forward with your implementation of your plan. And it's going beautifully again. You're totally emotionally regulated. Develop that scene now. And now notice how they're, they're, your attitude, your posture towards the world and towards life is totally different now. You really feel this, the wind in your sails. You really know you can do it. You can get the responses that you want. You have this feeling of total hope, total engagement. Really feel into this and make a deep impression of it. And now imagine that you're coming towards completion around this plan. So you're, you're getting done with your project. And now feel into this total sense of accomplishment. 
your inner parent, see how creative and ingenious you are. These plans were so good. Your implementation was so smart, so responsive, so calibrated. They see that. Also, your plans were considerate. They kept others in mind and they were pro-social. And now feel into this sense of healthy pride. You've done well. You now make a deep impression of this. Now this is how things will be going forward. Okay, good. Now, look back one time at this suffering that you repatterned, this negative emotional learning that you dealt with towards the beginning of the meditation. Look back on that. Now you're seeing it from this place of perspective you're also seeing it more impersonally. It's like, yeah, this was just conditioning. I was exposed to this conditioning and the learning happened, but there's nothing fundamentally wrong with me at all. And now you see that. And also from this space, from this place of spacious observation taking, you also know that so many others suffer with the same conditioning. So reflect on that. On the in breath, reflect on their suffering. See how you really understand what they've gone through. And on the out breath, wish them well send the wish that their suffering decrease. Also see this camaraderie. See how You've all been through similar situations that how in a limited and imperfect way, you know their minds, you know their mental states, you know their anguish. That these others who have had these similar experiences also know your mind in a limited and imperfect way, but still you feel seen and known. Also, all of you see together how this is no one's fault. No one's to be blamed. This is just conditioning. And then keep going with that. On the in-breath, reflecting on their suffering. On the out-breath, wishing them well. Really see how you see all this from a different perspective now. There's this broadness of view, there's this spaciousness. This broadness of view is much easier when there's no self-blame. Okay, good. And now, go ahead and wrap that part up. Now, just for 30 seconds, 
reflect on what this meditation was like for you. What did you learn? This is a mindful review. What were the insights? Reflect on that now. Also, we'll take question and answer and, and practice reports here in a minute. So think about something that you might wanna report to the group or maybe a question, an area of confusion. Think about that now. Okay, good. Now I'll count from five to one. And when I get to one, you'll be awake and present in the room, settled in the experience. Five, four, three, two, one. Awake and present in the room, settled in the experience. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, any questions or comments that people wanted to make? How did, how did things go for people? I, uh, I had a question. Sure. Um, well, one general comment, I, I really have found a lot of value out of from, from these meditations, but I, I also noticed that uh, I feel quite tired at the end of them. It requires quite a bit of uh, mental effort for me. Um, my question is, um, I've been reading this book, The Tao Fully Feeling. Okay. You've heard of this one, but um, uh -huh. he talks quite a bit about needing to kind of claim or reclaim your feelings of anger and blame. Uh -huh. uh, and I've noticed in myself, I, I mean, I, I, I'm sort of, sussing out whether that's true or to what degree that's true okay but in the middle of this meditation you there was one scene of like somebody's mistreated you uh -huh. your ipfs come and kind of help intervene in that situation uh -huh. but i guess my question is how do you see the role of sort of in that imagining myself as, as my sort of child self finding anger, finding blame, how does that fit into this okay. scenario or how do you yeah. see it fitting yeah. in? Yeah, I think it's a really important question. So, and let me just be clear, I'm just, I'm just gonna offer you my thoughts on this. This is like, this is not, you know, final and, you know, other, you always, you know, also um, check in with other sources as well, but this is just my perspective. So I think that, um, that like, okay, so recently I heard about how like in CBT, um, they talk about how like, Anger arises when a rule has been broken. And so, and so, and you know, that, that seems like to make so much sense to me. And like, you know, in this scene, possibly for you, or in this scene for me, like a rule was broken. There was like, uh, I was mistreated. And so then the anger arise in a way to be like, hey, this is not right. And like, actually like set a boundary and kind of reject the conditioning is really healthy in my mind. And so I think it's important to feel this kind of, how about this? It's like this balanced boundary setting and in a sense, restorative anger. It's like, no, I don't want this. And that's actually restoring things to how they should be in a certain way of looking at things. Now, I think there are other forms of anger that are not as healthy, but we can set those to the side. But if you want to discuss those, okay, that's cool. Um, and then that, that type of anger, like, for me, there's like this feeling of cl of cleanness. It's clean. It's like, okay, I'm angry now. The thing gets fixed and it's over and now I'm moving on. Instead of this kind of like, it just always churning and turning and, and, and going on. So I'll just say that. Okay, so now to the issue of blame, which is really interesting to me. Um, and then I kind of presented like a posture or a position on blame that I think is skillful and can work, but is not 
was not like really sophisticatedly laid out just due to not wanting to be too verbose, right? But so I think it's skillful. Let's just say you were mistreated by your parents. Let's say that they spoke to you in a way that was like denigrating. And like to kind of like, as part of this like healthy anger to like push blame on that, men push blame on them mentally when you're kind of in this child mode, I think is really healthy, really, really healthy. And as a matter of fact, I want, I want you to blame your parents in that mode. But then as you, and then that's like kind of part, it's like part of the um, working through the healthy anger piece. But then as that's worked through, then like as you're now, like as you become less emotionally charged, then like kind of your your cognitive capacities come back online. And then you can once again do this perspective taking, which I think the kind of the most developed perspective here is one where you see fundamentally how your conditioning is not your fault. Others conditioning is not their fault. And that for me, reinforces forgiveness and, and letting go and also wisdom because you see, oh, it's these conditioning, it's this conditioning that has brought this about, not some sort of hateful volition on anyone's part. So in a sense, the piece of the blame is you, you allow for blame initially, but then you kind of work through it through this perspective taking as you get more soothed. So that was a bit of a verbose answer, but did that speak to your question? And is there more around that? No, that, that was uh, on point. And I mean, it's, it, it's kind of similar to what was being talked about in this book. I mean, there's sort of this two-step process of like, uh -huh. kind of taking possession of or owning yep. the, being in the blame, but then finally working through that to a point where then you can kind of see it from a bigger huh? perspective. So. Right. And another way I put this is if you're like feeling like a child and you're in a child mode, blame and be angry. But then as you kind of come into this like healthy adult mode where you're taking perspective, then you can start allowing that to kind of fade and for something else, like, like a deeper kind of more perspective taking view to arise. Thanks. Cool. Yep. Hey, what's coming up for people? I'll share something. Uh -huh. um, I get so much out of these. I really appreciate it. There's so many different things that I, I'm like, oh, that's a really good thing to flesh out or that's a good thing to work uh -huh. on. But then uh, one thing that was happening to me today more um, was I was getting distracted by my my breathing because it would get all jacked up and I would like start to, I'd start to want to like breathe up in my chest or uh -huh. my, and, and I know, um, you know, I've, I've worked a lot on like diaphragmatic breathing uh -huh, uh -huh. and I, when I meditate, I feel pretty calm with my breath, uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, but so, so I find it uh, distracting and I don't know quite how to navigate it because sometimes I would like sort of try to force myself to breathe in a better, more yeah. healthy way. Uh -huh. Then, it, but then I was like, it would take me out, and then, and then I, or if I just allow the, should I just let it get all chaotic, and then see if it kind of resolved itself, or you know, I just couldn't, I couldn't figure out what to do with that piece. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, so let me just see if I'm getting this right. So it's like, okay, you know, you try to kind of do the diaphragmatic breath, breathing. Um, but then you notice that sometimes during the session that like the breath gets all kind of like. Uh, erratic and that you don't quite know how to deal with it. And then do you, do you notice like when it's arising, like what, what, um, like what's coming up for you or what part of the meditation it comes up during? I feel like it was, it, it, it's pretty consistently, like if I'm in a triggered, you know, yeah. trigger, then that happens. But then also when the ideal parents come in, I'm sometimes anxious that I won't be able to uh, yeah. get with them or get the comfort um, yeah, you know, yeah 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 so okay. i think i get a little bit anxious that i'm having struggling or trying to get myself uh -huh. to um so then I, my breath starts goes a little bit with that so every yeah. so often when something clicks and i feel a little bit more relaxed and something works then my breathing gets a little bit more yeah calm. yeah 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 so. okay so so yeah let me see if i can speak to this so like 
Okay, so you know, like I've really not done much of like the 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 some like I've not really done all that much study around the whole somat all the somatic pieces, which I think are really important, and it's just a deficit in my learning. So let me just say that, and then, but then the other thing is, in a certain sense, like in a certain sense, I don't know that you're describing a problem. <laughs> you know, like like oh, you know, I get all weird when I'm angst and I'm not breathing right. And then I think then, but you're noticing, but then you're describing something else that's very, very positive, which is like, you know, you're, you're mindful enough and you're, you're doing enough perspective taking to see like, oh, I'm getting all like, like the whole system's all screwed up when you're angst and then, oh, okay. I, I kind of like settle, settle. And then also I like, I just like that you're, it's like kind of obvious that you would, the breathing would be off when you're touching into the trigger. But then also I think it's, it's, perceptive of you to see oh you know i have my doubts that the parents will be able to fix this for me and then you're seeing that as well so i think that that's also good and that and that as you see that and like also like what i'd say is have the parents see that like oh eve you're still a little angst you know like you're not settled and then we see that and and it's okay to t take your time with this and then this will get worked through so that's kind of how i would think about is that is that helping you <laughs> great super okay great well, if there's just like one more comment we can take it anything else coming up for people if i only... have a question can i jump yeah. in sure of course go ahead robert um my the thing the question i have is that you you say that your ideal parents console you by saying you're perfect you did nothing wrong right and um, the big issue I have right now in my life is that I feel like I have done some very serious things wrong that okay. have really caused me grief in my relationships. Yeah. And so I, when I imagine myself as a young child, I can, you know, even if I'm doing something wrong, like stealing a toy from my little brother or right. and getting, getting punished harshly or whatever. Right, 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 right. I can, I can understand the ideal parents telling me I did nothing wrong because as a five-year-old, you're not really you know, culpable. Right. But then when I try to apply it back to my, my trigger of, of recent times, it's very difficult for me to view my ideal mm -hmm. parent right. telling me you're perfect. You did nothing wrong when I just don't feel that way. Yeah. Okay. What, okay. How, so, so yeah, uh, this is, this is, I think a really interesting point. I'm glad you bring it up. And then the, the thing about the thing about like differentiating like child self, adult self is like, you know, completely right. So I think, I think you've got it totally right on the child part. Like the child does nothing wrong. Okay. Um, then moving on into the piece about um, a, a doing things that are wrong as an adult. So how to put this? Um, I think that both views are important. Let me, let me, and before, by the preface, let me say that harsh self-blame is never right. Okay is never right. And so don't fall into self reproach and harshness towards yourself. Issue number two is there is a way to understand even the adult and uh, competent responsible self as not blameworthy either, because you are and like, I'm, there's a, there's a certain way that this is, I think a complete and utter truth. You are not separate from your conditioning. Had you had better conditioning, this wouldn't be this way for you. And you're not to blame for your conditioning. And that's just my belief. And I think it's really important to feel that, inhabit that space, have the ideal parents uh, see that in you and comfort you in that way. And also, paradoxically, it's really important to take responsibility. And see, and then like feel, feel the, 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 the really uncomfortable regret. And I can tell the way that you're speaking, you're already feeling in it, what strikes me as like in a kind of honest way, you're letting yourself feel the regret. And so feel it and feel the pain. Um, and then let uh, these inner parents or whoever in the scene or in real life soothe you and, and help you work through it. You're not Stalin, you know, you're not Mao Zedong what you did was probably just foolish and that's it. So, you know, there's reason to forgive yourself, but it, it might, it also might take time. And it's also, I think important to like, let yourself like kind of like analyze 
in a more kind of like cognitive mentalizing type way, like see how this was bad, see how this hurt the other. And also it could help to like write a, a, a letter saying like, I, I did all these things bad, blah, blah, blah. You can send it or not. Um, so, so what I mean to say is to summarize it all, the child is not blameworthy. The adult is somewhat not blameworthy at all. And then somewhat obviously has to take responsibility and there is a place for feeling regret and it's more nuanced for adults. Is that speaking to your question? And is there more around that? No, that that's perfect. Thank you. Sure, sure, sure. And let me also say that you are not alone in this. I have done things that I deeply regret. Um, there are still habit patterns in me that are dysfunctional that cause suffering for me and others. And you are not alone in this. <laughs> so for whatever that's worth. Um, okay, cool. Well, hey, let's go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you all for coming. And then, you know, we'll keep going with this every Saturday. Okay, bye-bye.